Good evening. I want to welcome everybody to the services here at Church of Christ of Gardendale. I want to first off thank the elders, Jason and Andrew, and all y'all for being in attendance tonight. I also want to thank the members in this building that has gave me the tools to be the man I am today. Y'all made the classes memorable and the classes have taught me how I should live. Tonight we'll be in the book of Jonah, in Jonah 1. We'll be in Jonah 1 all night, so if you want to leave your markers there. The last couple of weeks we have been talking about Jonah and his story in the college class. As a little kid, I was always amazed about the story of Jonah, about a man that was swallowed by a big fish and he still is alive. But recently when I went through it, I saw that there was more than just a man getting swallowed by, by a fish. It was more story, more lessons that I can learn that I apply to my life today. I'm going to start in Jonah 1, reading the first three verses. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has came up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So why did Jonah flee? Jonah knew the people, so he's kind of being prejudiced against the people because he knew who they were. The second question I want to ask is, why Tarshish? He started at Joppa, which he got on a ship, but Tarshish is right here where God commanded him to, to go and teach the people. But the ship was going all the way at Tarshish. So he's getting as far as his way as he can from Nineveh, so he didn't have to, to teach the people. When do we flee from God today? As being a college student, I see a lot of homosexuality in the school setting. This is one of the biggest things, the biggest problems today. God has said multiple times that he does not approve of it, but we still let it happen. Please turn to Romans 1. I'll be reading verses 26 and 27. Verse 26. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of, this, of the women, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing with what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Paul is telling the Romans that God does not like homosexuality. He said it's shameful, and it, there will be a penalty for, for their actions. Even though they knew that that it was wrong, they still disobeyed God and and did not do what they were supposed to do. This same problem has been happening for the last forty years. Forty years in the forties or fifties, the church was prejudiced against other people with different colors or how they spoke, and God has plainly said in different passages that we should not be prejudiced against other people. Jonah did the same thing. Even though he knew that God told him to go to Nineveh, he still didn't. He, did, he disobeyed God and flee, fleed from him. My second point, I'll be reading from, from Jonah 1, 4 through 9. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty temp tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. The load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, and lay down, and was fast asleep. So the ca captain came to him, and said to him, What do you mean? 
sleeper. Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come let us cast lots that we may know for who, whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? This is What is your op- occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and what people are you? So he said to them, I am a he- Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This storm was so strong that even the professionals, the mariners, were afraid. They tried to throw cargo out of the ship, and they even tried to row back to, to shore, but they couldn't. The, pa- the pagans saw that it was the supernatural, that it's not just, it wasn't a random sc- storm. There was a God behind it. So they, they prayed to their pagan gods, and then they asked Jonah to pray to his God. They asked, where was Jonah from? And Jonah answered, that he's a Hebrew and he was, he was from the God of the heaven and that he made the sea and dry land. Jonah recognized the power of God. If you remember, even Jesus controlled the sea several times. Please turn to Matthew 8. I'll be reading 26 and 27. This is Jesus on the sea. But he said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the, the winds and the sea obey him? The sea obeyed God, but Jonah still a bit disobeyed God. Even though Jonah knew he was powerful, still didn't want to obey him. How does this apply in our lives? One of the biggest things, another big thing I see to the day-to-day coming and going is unlawful divorces or unlawful marriages. It's a spiritual disobedience, but there's a, it causes problems within the family. The kids are all broken up, and the, it affects the grandkids, and et cetera, and the, everybody in the family. This sin doesn't just affect you, but everybody around you. Now I'll be reading verses 10 and 11. Verse 10. Then a man was exceedingly afraid and, he, and said to him, Why have you done this? For the man, have, man knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temperest. The consequence of disobeying God was the storm. Our action today impacts everybody around us. Our sins mislead people and can ultimately lead people to sin. As a football player at Birmingham Southern, I play off at Salon. And one of the biggest penalties you can get is a holding call. And I've had plenty of them in my days, but um, whenever you get a holding call and there's a touchdown, the the touchdown doesn't count. So it gets called back, and it's it's embarrassing because you hurt everybody on the team and not yourself. And then they they zoom in on the – if you watch NFL uh, NFL and college sports, they uh, zoom in, and you got the linemen all hunkered over, all out of breath, and they're so – they're just mad at themselves because they – they held and they ultimately hurt the team. Same in life. Whenever we, for instance, do something just like a holding call, we hurt everybody around us, not just ourselves. Whether we act like Jonah, who harmed the people that he was with, or we can be like Paul, whose actions led the people to God, we have a choice to make every day as we wake up. Please turn to Matthew 5. I'll be reading verses 13 through 16. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? 
It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot, foot by, feet by man. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor, be, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that you may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So this verse is saying that we should be the salt of the earth, a light that shines for people, that we should glorify your God in heaven, which is our goal here on this earth. We're supposed to do good for others and not put people in danger, like Jonah put, put the, the mariners in danger. Now I'll be doing verses 12 through 15. Start in verse 12. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the, the men rode hard to return to the land. They could not, for the, the sea continued to grow more temperate against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with instant, innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Jo and we see here that Jonah humbly accepted his fault. He desired to be thrown into the sea. His humility to give himself up was a big, a big thing for Jonah to save these other, other men. Please turn to James 4. I'll be reading 6 through 7. Verse 6. But he gave more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will fl fl flee from you. Here in verse 6, it tells us that God gives grace to the humble. But if you're proud, he resists you. If Jonah would have had this same humble attitude, he would not, he would not put himself or he wouldn't put the mariners in this situation. Taking responsibility for your sin is a hard thing to do today. And we, it's hard to publicly do it. Jonah was a, was a public example of his disobedience. But now he is a public example of repentance. Please turn to Galatians 6. I'll be reading 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows... That he will also reap. For he who sows to, the, to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Here at the beginning, Jonah reaps to the flesh. He doesn't go to where God told him to go. So he, the, his benefits from reaping the flesh was the storm. Then, at the end of the story, Jonah reaped, reaped to, the, um, to the Spirit, and he reaped benefits from the people repenting to God. Taking responsibility for our actions is a hard thing to do, especially in today's society. It is necessary to own up to our sins so we can repent from it and become in a right relationship with God. We will answer for our sins, and what we will reap, what we sow, we will reap. Now we're reading verses 16 and 17. Verse 16. Then the man feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took, took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. 
God prepared a, a great fish to swallow Jonah so he could guide Jonah back to, to Nineveh and show that he was wrong. Today, I think the world gives the giant fish a wrong description. When I was growing up, I would, I would watch the uh, VeggieTale version of Jonah and the big fish, and he would sit in the belly of the fish with a boat, sit all comfortable, and he was singing. And, but I think it's more like it was dark, uncomfortable. Um, I, I, I imagine him in a box, a small box with his knees to his head and cramping. And this is, I think, it shows us that this is where we need to be in, if we do wrong. That's where we will be. Uh, just like God prepared the fish for Jonah, God had prepared a cross for the ones he loved. Please, please turn to 1 Corinthians 2. I'll be reading, reading 7 through 9. Verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in our mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who loved, love him. So in this verse it says God prepared prepared for those who loved him. Jonah loved God, loved God but he, he was wrong. So God prepared the ugly fish, gruesome fish. In the same way God prepared a cross that was gruesome and that was painful to watch for us. And to take our sins away, like he, he straightened Jonah out with the, with the fish. How do we receive the gift that God prepared for our sins? First, we need to repent like Jonah did and humbly accept that we was wrong and turn away from our sins. Then we need to baptize, be baptized for the mystery of our sins so we can one day be in heaven with him. Before I was, got baptized, uh, I was sitting over there with Ross at a gospel meeting, and every day he would uh, punch me out after let, just give me a nice little nudge on the shoulder and say, "Dude, you need to be baptized." And I didn't I took that a little lightly until I, I realized it on the last night, and he punched me again, and I realized I didn't be baptized. So tonight, I hope that I gave you a little nudge, and that you will see that you're in the wrong. And please, if you have any. If anybody needs to change your ways, please come while you stay in the sink.